Hello, this is Boblax here, welcome back to the channel, and today I have a lot of news to go over with you guys, so let's just not waste any more time and get straight into it. Starting off, we have Steven Crowder, the very popular conservative YouTuber, posting this onto his Twitter on Halloween. He says, Best Halloween costume, hashtag mug club, hashtag Crowder Spooktacular, with the four Twitter poll options being Slutty Trump, Slutty Greta Thunberg, Slutty AOC, and Slutty General Morgan Jr. Now, what is the issue with this tweet, you might ask? Well, Greta Thunberg is a 16-year-old girl. Steven, that is not the best tweet to be making. Luckily, he did end up deleting it once this was pointed out, but, um, yikes. I can't believe you didn't think that one through, buddy. It's just, ugh. It's almost as bad as when Tanamongu dressed up as a slutty Jojo Sequa for Halloween, who is also a young teenage girl. Just think before you tweet, man. It's honestly not that hard. And this is coming from someone who tweets about 40 times a day on average. Yes, I do have a Twitter issue. Moving on, Shroud is a very popular Twitch streamer who recently left the platform and his massive 7 million follower count over there to start streaming on Mixer. This, in combination with Ninja leaving Twitch, has left Twitch with the first downward trend in the site's history in terms of viewership. A month after Ninja left, Twitch went down in viewership by over a hundred million. Now, obviously, this on its own isn't only because of Ninja and Shroud, although they are probably very big contributing factors to the loss of viewership. It could also be just people are getting sick of Twitch with situations like Alinity not getting any punishment whatsoever on her account for throwing her cat, while other people for doing pretty much the same thing or maybe even less egregious of an action, getting temporary bans. Twitch is not a very good platform when it comes to its rules and how they enforce them and just the Twitch moderation staff in general. Besides that issue, I actually think Twitch is a great platform as a product, as something that you you could use as a viewer or a creator it's great but it's just the regulations and the rules are just so out of whack and if twitch got better moderation staff it would probably be the best platform for streaming without a doubt but i guess until that happens uh we have mixer we have youtube i feel like wishing twitch to get better staff is like wishing youtube to get better policies or a better algorithm or something like that it's not gonna happen although twitch's solution is much more simple than youtube's maybe sometime in the next five years they will have better management and the viewership can go up but until then i just see the viewership going down and down and down over the course of the next few months only time will tell though right now it's doing very well in terms of viewership and i don't see that changing too quickly, although if nothing's done about their staff, I think they will lose viewers. I would love to hear what you guys think about this in particular in the comment section below. Next up, we have a bit of a throwback. Actually, more than just a bit of a throwback, because we're going all the way back to 2005 and taking a look at the first video ever uploaded to YouTube titled, Me at the Zoo. So the creator of this video ended up getting hacked, and the hacker ended up changing the description of this video to say, sub to sub, K thanks bay, fast and loyal, if not I get a subs back, I will unsubs your channel. The name of the music in the background is Darut Sandstorm. Pretty stupid hack, not really worth mentioning besides the fact that it was done on the first ever video on YouTube. I just find it a little weird and kind of ironic on YouTube's end that they let the first video on YouTube get, you know, hacked like this. But hey, nothing else is uploaded onto this channel, it hasn't been used for years literally 14 years so ultimately i don't think it's that big of a deal it's just weird hopefully this next one is a bit more interesting for you guys phase banks recently did thirty thousand dollars worth of property damage in a hotel room that he rented out in las vegas obviously he had quite the party there and it got out of control to the point where majority of the hotel room was destroyed and the footage is pretty shocking i'll let you take a look at it for yourself
So yes, this damage is completely over the top. It's like a tornado went off in the hotel room. Some stuff to me is just absolutely insane. Like the window in particular. Did someone try to like jump out the building or something? It's like the hotel room is really high up. Like a decent amount of stories. If anyone broke through that and actually fell out, they would be dead. So I don't know what the fuck is going on at that party. I can understand wanting to have a great time and maybe stuff getting out of hand. Trust me, if I were able to rent out a hotel room like that, I would probably have quite a wild party, but not as crazy as getting to the point where uh, someone is legitimately trying to, like, kill themselves or somebody else by uh, being thrown out the window or even accidentally, you know, breaking the window in some way. I mean, apparently this happens all the time. It came out that the hotel is willing to drop all charges if he pays the 30k dollars up front because apparently this happens all the time in their hotel and they just let people go in order to get more money off them, which I guess is a smart business move because you don't want to be in like a bunch of lawsuits 24-7 if it really does happen this frequently. But if I were in FaZe Bank's position, you know, why even get to the point where you do that much damage to where you have to pay that money? It seems like the money could be better spent somewhere else, but to be fair, FaZe Bank's is pretty much made of money at this point, so I don't really think it's that big of a dent in his bank account, but still, 30k is 30k, regardless of how rich you are. I feel like that's a sizable chunk of change, but maybe it's not a big deal to face banks. Who knows? You'd think after the Barley House shit that happened two years ago, he wouldn't want to get into this type of legal trouble again, but I guess he doesn't learn. <laughs> what you gonna do? Anyways, moving on to our final story. Twitter has updated their community guidelines, and, uh, there's some pretty problematic wording in these community guidelines, and I normally don't say this about community guidelines or TOS, but, uh, this one is pretty concerning. So under their rules section for child exploitation on Twitter, there's a section that says, what is not a violation of this policy? Which reads out, discussions related to child sexual exploitation as a phenomenon or attraction towards minors are permitted, provided they don't promote or glorify child sexual exploitation in any way. Artistic depictions of nude minors in a non-sexualized context or setting may be permitted in a limited number of scenarios. Example, works by internationally renowned artists that feature minors. So, what the fuck? Like... The sentence, artistic depictions of nude minors, that in itself, that little chunk of wording is problematic. And to say that that is acceptable in any way, shape, or form, an artistic depiction of a nude minor is just, my god, it, it's crazy in my opinion. In my opinion, it's crazy. I mean, there is some people who would, you know, advocate for lolly, which is basically cartoon child porn, but... Even though that's not illegal everywhere, I still find that kind of reprehensible and something that shouldn't be allowed on Twitter. Like, I don't want to be scrolling on Twitter and seeing any artistic depictions of any nude minors, period. I don't want to see nude minors, period, at all in any form on my timeline. So the fact that it's allowed even in some circumstances is just like, what? Why? <laughs> it's just so stupid. I wish they were more strict on this. Like, obviously, they don't fully promote pedophilia based off that sentence and other wordings within the page, which I will leave in the description below for you to check out in full if you feel like you want to. But um, even the fact that it's allowed in some way, shape, or form is just so disgusting to me, and I don't want to see that on my timeline. I really just don't. And, uh, I use Twitter a lot, so hopefully I don't come across somebody who is making use of that loophole within pedophilia on Twitter. I hope not. I guess that's just the risk you have to take now by creating a Twitter account. Hopefully the people I follow are normal enough to not retweet child porn onto my timeline. So that is about it for the news. If you enjoyed, be sure to subscribe with notifications on because I will have more videos just like this coming out in the future as new stories develop. Be sure to follow me on Twitter if you want to know what those stories will be. And thank you so much to my channel members for supporting the channel. With all that being said, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in another video.